Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mr. Clockwork Apple and today I'm going to be reviewing Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey. Um, as you can see this is a game on the DS and it is part of the Shin Megami Tensei series. Um, if you've never heard of the series it's... I guess the best way to describe it is more like a grown-up version of Pokemon where instead of collecting cute cuddly little animals you are dealing with deadly vicious demons and monsters that will and can kill you. Um, each game has its own separate plot, you don't need to play any of the others in the series to understand this, although there may be a few references you might not get here and there, but most you'll be able to get most of your enjoyment out of this game if you've never even touched another Shin Megami Tensei game before. So, um, our plot this time is that in the Arctic Circle no, sorry, Angtar, South Pole, South Pole, I forget which one that is. At the South Pole, there's this big sort of black hole has appeared, and it's expanding, taking over more of the landmass, swallowing up research stations, and basically we need to find a way to stop it. So the government have got together in secret and come up with a special strike force, a team they call the Strike Force, who are going to be sent inside the black hole to try and find out what's on the other side. And, of course, we're a member of this strike force. And it's our job to lead the soldiers of the crew. And in case... We don't know what's on the other side of this black hole yet. So, of course, when we get there, it turns out not just to be a cave or anything. It's you know, completely full to the brim of demons. And they're, they're making these strange parodies of human life. So there's a red light district. There's a supermarket. You know, this huge, great shopping centre great big pile of trash. So they're all parodying human life and essentially using that to work against you. And see it turns out that this black hole is opened up in the South, South Pole as Earth's defence against humanity to stop us from basically wrecking Earth with our greed and pollution and so on and so forth. So um, as you can guess this game already starts off pretty dark with the apocalypse already on its way and us finding out how to stop it. So as the game continues there's different paths, there's sort of one main path with three different endings depending on how you act through the game. Um, there's a sort of morality system that these games use. It's not so much good and evil as much as law and chaos. Which I think is hand yeah it's a really good idea I think rather because good and evil is kind of subjective I was said. So basically law is complete and utter order, everyone follows the rules, behaves exactly how they're supposed to, but has no free will because of it. You can't disobey the rules because you have no power to do so, you're just like a mindless machine. On chaos side we have complete free will, but there's no rules, which means anyone can do anything they want, meaning that if you're not strong enough to stop them, you will die and is basically endless riots and fighting and murder for all of history. Obviously the exact consequences of which ending you get changes depending on the game and I'm not going to spoil them for this game. Mainly the ending you want to go for is the neutral route where you tell both sides that they suck and basically humanity is going to sort things out ourselves going for a more middle route where even then it's not even that good an ending because generally speaking you're only putting off the problem until it starts up again but it's giving humanity a second chance, which I think in the world these games put forward for you is the best you know, best you're going to get. So um, the way the game actually works is when you are exploring the this black hole, which is called the Schwarzwelt, which I believe is German for Dark World, which I think is pretty cool, um, there's a first person perspective and as you move around through the caves you will get into random battles, obviously, against all the demons that you know, plague the caves and what lies beyond them and obviously you can fight them to gain experience and money um, but the main thing about the game is you have to talk to the demons to try and recruit them onto your side so you'll find the demon you want you to join you and it will ask you a question you have to answer it the way you think the demon will be happy giving it the answers you want then give it a few items and money or whatever it wants to make it happy and then if you're lucky it will join your side and fight alongside you 
to make you know, keep you alive, which is really necessary in these games because they are hard. They will kill you if you're not ready for it. Um, the other important thing is once you've got your demons, you got free to fuse them together to make new demons. So if you get two weak ones, you can put them together to get a less weak one. Put that together with another less weak one to get a medium one and so on and so forth and eventually you end up with a decent party of strong demons. And they've they will they can inherit skills from the ones they've been put together from, so you can customize them as and how you see fit. And if you're clever and know you know if you plan ahead, you can actually fuse together some pretty powerful demons even early on in the game, really. Um, as for the main character, who's this guy on the box here, wearing this really cool armor, this is called Demonica. I mean, everyone in the game wears this stuff. It's like this super high-tech armor. It is amazing. I can't... If I start talking about it, I'll be here for hours. It is really cool stuff. Um, basically, you don't have access to magic or anything that the demons do, so instead you have to use your equipment as a you know to fight with so you can upgrade your melee attack which does melee damage um, there's your gun which does gun damage and also lets you use special ammo instead of magic so there's fire shot ice shot so on and things like that and there's your armor that protects you from obviously it raises your defense and also protects you from certain elements using the elements is really important in these games again um, in this particular one, if you hit an enemy of something it's weak to, so say I'm fighting an enemy that's weak against fire, I hit it with a fire attack, then everyone on my party who's the same, as I they've got the same morality, so there's law, neutral, chaos. If a neutral person on my party hits an enemy with a fire spell, then all the other neutral people on my party will attack that enemy to do extra damage. So it's important that you really put your party together well to man you know, get this extra damage, hit your enemy's weaknesses, otherwise you're going to be in these fights for a very long time and the enemies have a lot more health than you do, so you are going to die quickly if you don't use these methods. Um, aside from that, there's quite, there's, a, there's quite a few characters in the game. Um, not, too many, too, not too many of them are important, there's only a few that will show up here and there, but they're all pretty um, memorable. There's I guess there's two main characters you want to look out for, who you can kind of see here on the back of the box there. Um, there's Jimenez and Zanellin, who, they're kind of your closest allies through the game. You've got the other soldiers working alongside you, but they generally just pop up here and there. It's those two who are going to be the main driving force of the game, because you, the main character, never say anything. You're a silent protagonist, apart from the occasional dialogue box to say yes, no, or whichever. Um, also, you may have noticed behind my hands here, um, I'm holding an American copy of the game because the game was never actually released in Europe, but luckily being a DS title it means it will play on any DS, so even if you live in England you can play this game. Um, you may also notice it's an M rating, I mean, look, look at this, look at this list of stuff here, I mean, that is blood, violence, partial nudity, I mean, God. do not buy this for your children, they will be traumatised. Do not buy it for yourself, you will be traumatised. Um, yeah, this game can actually get to you quite a lot, because it gets kind of philosophical at times. But if you think you can handle that, and you're looking for a good RPG exploration kind of game, I can definitely recommend this. If you're looking to get into the Shin Megami Tensei series, again, definitely recommend this. It's probably one of the best RPGs available on the DS and 3DS consoles. I really hope it gets a update or a remake someday soon. You know, on the 3DS, better graphics, maybe voice acting, because that would be fantastic. I would, I would buy that instantly. I would pre-order it. I would import it from Japan and learn Japanese just so I could play it before everyone else. I love this game. I love this game. I love this game. Go buy it now. Buy it now. Do it. That one. Buy it. Anyway, um, yeah, ten out of ten. I've been Mr. Clockwork Apple, and buy it. Bye.